Hey everyone, and welcome to Real Life Real Crime Daily for Friday, May 26th, and I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Woody Overton. And I'm Mike Agavino. Hey guys. Hey, hey. Hey guys. Hey guys. Starting off this morning with a little good news and a little bad news. Lay it on us. The good news, Turtle Man is not dead. That's, I saw that. that. Good news. Saw that. Turtle People Man is not People are very dead. passionate about Turtle Tur- Man. Mike fucked up. Turtle Man is not dead. Turtle Man uh, had a limb of a tree hit him in 2022 yeah. and uh, caused some pretty serious injuries and lots of rumors ran around the internet of uh, about him dying, but he did not die. He has recovered. Don't know why we're not seeing him on television or featured film being the gifted actor that he is, but, uh, but hopefully he will will make another appearance. The bad news, Uh Tina Turner is no longer. We lost Tina Turner legs ever yesterday. Yeah. She, she was, she looked eternally young. I mean, she was uh, in amazing shape her entire life. So had her 45 private dancer. Yeah. Private dancer. Yes. Dancer for money. Yeah. Uh, I, they went, you want me today. That was before I knew about What was clothes. the song from. Uh, uh, I Turner the, used to I beat the to shit beat out of ass. Ass. Yeah. God dang, man. <laughs> that movie the, was unreal. From the Mel Gibson movie, the like apocalyptic yeah, yeah, Mel yeah, Gibson. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mad Max. Mad Max movie. Well, I can't remember. We don't need another hero or something. Was, is that, that yeah. was uh, yeah. one of my favorite. Uh, I, I uh, also owe a. Uh, a thank you to all of those people who praised us for getting in front of the Megan and Harry bullshit story <laughs> about their near catastrophic car chase through New York city. Uh, virtually every news outlet on the planet has now validated our position. We were out there before anyone. And I just want to thank Woody for being bold enough to demand that we cover <laughs> that right. story. I'm sorry. Excuse me. So thank you. Woody. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to get into the to the news now, the crime news for today. And wow, a hey, crazy. Can I interrupt real quick? Boom. All right, so <laughs> That's an early interruption. It's an early interruption, but that, y'all, this is important. And you know we support Corporal Sean Kelly and his family, right? Yes. So I got a request in from a, a lifer. And they have a, a new event that's coming up for him on Saturday, June the 3rd. So I think it's early enough we can get it out there. But they asked us to promote it, and we know we're going to promote it. So on Saturday, June 3rd, 2023, at, from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. at 941 Government Street, Denham Springs, Louisiana, mm-hmm. they're having an event, the Bayou Gunslingers, DJ K-Jack, and Swamp Donkeys. Um, there'll be it's a fundraiser benefit for Corporal Sean Kelly with Denham Springs Police Department who was critically injured in the line of duty on May 11, 2023 there'll be a $5 admission fee they'll be selling plate lunches including but not limited to Jim Alive Pasta Alive pulled barbecue chicken plates for $10 a piece there'll also be live music from a few popular local bands including the Clifton Brown Band very good Lance Woolley from the Hog Leg Band and Amp- Ampersand along with DJ Cack, and we'll also be having Kelly Stone performing the national anthem. There'll also be a dunk tank, bounce house, snowballs, face painting, and much more throughout the day. There'll be door prizes and live auctions, given some amazing items. We'd like to see everyone there for a great cause. It would be a designated seating area for law enforcement partners and their families, bringing chairs and families and plan on having a great time, again, for a great cause. And all proceeds, even from the vendors, will be donated to Corporate Kelly. And his family. Amen. Very good. So y'all, give it, y'all go out there on June third. Are the we are the make it, we'll swamp there. donkeys a band? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They got a lot band. of they yeah, got they a lot of bands uh, yeah. at yeah. that. Uh, That's a it's a great calls and and I can promise you this: if I'm available, I will be there. Um, so y- y'all come see us. A Ponchatoula man accused of shooting three siblings during a family disputed trailer park was captured and arrested after fleeing into a wooded area. Casey Halliford who was 31, was booked with three counts of attempted first-degree murder after the triple shooting, as well as the illegal discharge of a weapon. Of the three siblings that were shot, the office of Holy Family Catholic Church in Port Allen says that Casey Halliford's brother, Ryan, is the former pastor and that he is on life support in ICU. So he shot a priest? Shot a priest who was his brother. He's going straight to hell. 
Yeah, Ryan Halford is the current executive director of Mission Integration at St. Joseph's Academy in really? Baton Rouge, which That's is where I'm at, uh, niece and nephews. Right? Yeah, if you're not from if you're not from this school. area, yeah. that is the premier girl school, girl school yeah. in in the state, probably. Uh, a Ponchatoula woman who fled with Halford, who was 19 year old Ariane Williams, also was arrested on three counts of principal. Two first right. degree murder. Now, Louisiana Revised Statute 1427, same thing. She might as well. Be that's right. If, 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 uh, if a principle simply means that you are as guilty as the person who Absolutely. pulled the trigger. Absolutely. Uh, the sheriff's office said deputies responded to reports of a shooting shortly after 11 a.m. at a trailer park on South Range Road in Ponchatoula. A caller reported hearing 15 gunshots and said a wounded man was lying on the road. Investigators said they learned during an argument with his family members that Halliford retrieved the gun from his bedroom and shot one of his siblings, then chased the other two in the bedrooms and shot them, too. Besides Father Halliford, the other two victims were treated and released from the hospital. The identities of the victims and the nature of the wounds have not been disclosed. The Tangipahoa Parish Sheriff's Office also did not explain Williams' relationship to Halliford or the role she is accused of playing in the shooting and escape from the scene, but said both suspects were captured after a canine team began searching for them in the woods. Wow. Yeah, hey, doggies. That's, you know, it's pretty close to home for us and in Mole Stomping Grounds, Hammond, and of course, Ponchatoula and all that. Uh, and yes, we said in the words correctly, Tangipahoa Parish Sheriff's Office, Ponchatoula, you can't. I pass the sign for Tangipoa Parish every time. You, you can't even say it. I'm, say it I'm on the 55. Yeah, like me on I'm holding, I'm holding <laughs> back my uh, pronunciations for this setup that you guys have planned okay. for later in this episode. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to pronounce it. We should have just did any a mic. Dee, 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 dee. Cajun, Alert news and then the do a roll for you yeah. guys until then. <laughs> well, I hate to hear that. Uh, another tragic shooting, and it's crazy. I don't understand. Yeah, you shoot we'll, a priest. We'll, that's, we'll hear more that's, about uh, it. Yeah. That's I mean, pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what they were all doing at the trailer park, but I guess we'll find out And uh, anyway. so Not good, not good, not good. Take it to another one. Now, this one's a little bit crazy. Uh, in Kentucky, guy shot his roommate. Right, that mm-hmm. happens. I mean, yeah. you know, people shoot at each other or the, and stab each other, whatever. And the roommates sometimes. I I say, there's no quicker way to kill a friendship than to become roommates. Yeah. Then you find out who's eating whose food out of the ice box or not. You know, stealing their clothes or whatever. Well, this guy is behind bars um, after authorities claim he shot his roommate. Okay. Well, yes. Why did he shoot him? Why he shot him? Because he ate the victim, the victim's last hot pocket. He deserved. Oh, that's it. I mean, justifiable I mean, the victim, homicide. The victim ate his last. Hot yeah, no, that's yeah. that's justifiable yeah, right? homicide. So I don't know about that. I had a murder. On I the had flavor. a murder one time where a deaf mute guy um, uh, shot his brother for eating the last mayonnaise sandwich. But anyway, Clifton E. Williams, sixty four, Louisville was arrested Sunday on one count of assault for the shooting that wounded his roommate during an alleged argument over the microwavable food item, (laughs) being the hot pocket, y'all. Williams became upset when he learned his roommate had apparently eaten the last hot pocket and started throwing tiles at him. The roommate reportedly tried to leave, but then Williams went back inside the shared home, grabbed a gun, and shot his roommate in the ass. Mm. Uh, <laughs> right where it needed to yeah, be. Yeah. The, the roommate told investigators he sought help a few blocks away. I guess he could run with that bullet in his ass. Um, police said the unidentified victim was taken to the university hospital where he was treated for non life threatening injuries. Williams, who was arraigned on assault charge Monday morning, was ordered to have no contact with his roommate and not to possess any firearms or other weapons or eat hot pockets. No, I just had that part. The Nestle company, the maker of Hot Pockets, has just announced a new What Would You Do for a Hot Pocket promotion where consumers can post their videos showing what they'd do for a Hot Pocket to win a year's supply of these tasty treats. Rumor has it Clifton has already submitted his entry. And I, yeah. and I bet he wins. I bet he wins. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean that's pretty. 
I won't even enter really. now. I you was like, thinking about jumping you, in there. You like but Hot Pockets? I love Hot Pockets. Yeah, I've only had them a couple times. They come with a little white sleeve on it. Is that the That's hot right. Pocket? Yeah. yeah. Well, Lots of different pockets. flavors now. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's not that as pepperoni. Good. Not as good as Hello the, Fresh. Ham and cheese. Not as good as Hello Fresh on Bloody Angola 16. Yeah, that's 16 right. 16. No, else. I did those uh, flautas the other night. Have you guys had those hey, yet? Yeah, yes. My wife will ride your I ass had those about last how you week. said that. What, flutas? What Anytime I flautas? say fajitas flautas. or flautas, anything like that, my wife comes back with it. What's the right? I have no right idea. Here. It's flautas. I say it the way I say it. Okay, well, I, I almost... I, so I've been in training for you. I've been in training for your shit for years. I almost Mike. got in a punch out with the uh, voice activated thing in Rosetta Stone last night over oh, a, yeah, over a, a pronunciation of an Italian word. That, is it, did you type in? Because I wasn't here for that episode. And thank you all for covering it. The, the, uh, the when you said you asked for English, did you say the King's English? Because it used to be the Queen's English, she be, but she'd be dead. And now it's the king's English. <laughs> I don't think there's a there's a form of. Uh, uh, that's because you don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll go with we'll that. We'll find one. out in Rosetta Stone. What do you think the most popular flavor of hot pockets? Is? Ham and cheese. I know. Ham that. and cheese. I, like I think I'm eating pepperoni. Like I'm gonna have to look at that. It must but, have uh, been really high or so drunk. You know, or I mean, I, I think that's completely justifiable. That guy's gonna get off. Let's go to Florida. Florida. Sunny Florida. To Florida, to Indian River County in Florida, where law enforcement officials foiled a major escape plan from a millionaire who's housed in a prison down there. Huh. El Chapo? It was not El Chapo. Um, at least I don't, I don't think he goes by El Chapo. Um, they got a... Uh, they got a warning from somewhere. They got a little a little whisper that an inmate at the county jail by the name of John Manchek, who's 78 years old, was working on a plan to escape custody. Now, Manchek is kind of a unique prisoner because he's a rich guy. Yeah. Like he's like Mike. As in <laughs> No, no, no. No, he's a like he's Mike. a real rich guy. So, uh he got arrested in back in 2014 on child pornography charges, oh, okay. and uh, and so he's been um, he's kind of like the poor man's Jeffrey Epstein, this guy, but he yeah. still got pretty rich being the poor man's Jeffrey Epstein. So while uh, while in jail, he met a guy by the name of Byron Harvey, another guy by the name of Kerry Shepard, and. Harvey was allegedly placed on Manchek's payrolls. Again, multi-millionaire. So investigators learned that Manchek paid Harvey's bond so that he could be released. He also paid Shepard uh, another way because he was already released so they could plan this escape from the outside. Right. Um, so they can go to Waffle House? So there are house. two. I don't think these people were headed to the Waffle House. Uh, uh, two other folks were also listed as co-conspirators that were also employees of a company controlled by uh, Manchek, which is called Aeroshade. According to the sheriff's office, Manchek planned to put his escape plan into action with a scheduled doctor's appointment. So he would uh, he would mm -hmm. need to go to the doctor. They would have to take him uh, uh, out of the prison and uh, uh, and once he was on his way out of the jail. Shepard was allegedly going to notify Harvey and the co-conspirators plan included intercepting the transport vehicle as it arrived at the medical facility with Harvey and another person assaulting the corrections department deputies, freeing Manchek and then fleeing to an undisclosed location. The team planned to use several vehicles during the escape, including a truck and a van all paid for by Manchek. His, the, the final plan was to flee to France uh where Manchek owns a castle called Chateau de Petrigal, which we so have a lovely a pedophile. We have a lovely, yeah, Chateau de Pet. Well, if he's pedophile. got some castle, he might be as, as rich as uh, Epstein. No, yeah, Epstein's uh, townhouse is nicer than this castle, in my opinion. Yeah. But, okay. um, it's but still it's, a castle. Uh, yeah, but you know, if you're that rich and you have a castle like this, 
Uh, it might show in a castle, y'all. You, know, you, yeah. you might. Uh, yeah, we'll, sh- we'll show you this castle, but you might choose a little bit more wisely on your accomplices, I think. But, <laughs> but I don't. I don't know. I mean, it seems like he had the I can wait the to money it. to go a little bit heavier on yeah. uh, on his uh, on his accomplices. So, uh, after more than a two month investigation, detectives were able to stop the escape plan. So now Manchek and the others face charges in connection to conspiring the escape plan. Manchek was charged with attempted escape, is being held on $250,000 bond. Harvey was charged with criminal conspiracy and unlawful use of two-way communication. His bond was set at $150,000. Des Moya, uh, the other two were, were obviously also uh, charged. This guy had a G5 waiting at the airport. Right. And he said he's uh, got some money. So he had this I mean, actually yeah. seems like a really solid plan here. Right. Um and uh France probably wouldn't have extradited him yeah, to we, the US. He, he could be living happily back in his castle, but there was a rat somewhere. We don't know who the rat was. Yeah. But somebody ratted uh out this plan. Otherwise, uh it seems like uh, they might have the officers might have been uh, unprepared so, for this. You're right. Uh, he's not as rich as you because you have a G7, right? He has a G5 waiting on him. Uh, I have a car. I don't believe it's a G7. <laughs> and uh, and I only fly Frontier because I can bring my yeah, emotional support uh, snake yeah, on yeah. board with me. <laughs> that was a good story <laughs> I did the other day with that. I saw the video where that dude whipped that dude's yeah. ass with a snake in the street. Was, Slanging that like, thing, man. He was laying down the Cruelty mat. to a python. Right. It was indeed. All right, a Maryland father has died after sustaining life ending injury. It, boom. After sustaining life ending injuries while defending his children after a schoolyard fight took a dark turn. Christopher this is Wright. Crazy. That's how I read this guy. Yeah, Christopher Wright, 43, met two adults and three teens who approached his home on Friday around 5 p.m. and assaulted him when Wright refused to let them speak with his fiance's son. The boy, 14, had gotten in a fight at middle school with another teen, and they wanted to continue the fight after school, but Wright told them he was not going to let them fight with the boy. His fiance, Tracy Karapshinsky, said... <laughs> Hey, I like that. Said that the suspects had turned their attention on Wright, telling him that if the boy would not fight, they would fight with him instead. Police responded to class, right? Yeah. Police responded to calls of an assault and arrived on the scene shortly after 5 p.m. that day to find Wright had already received treatment from County Fire Department personnel. Responders then rushed Wright to a local trauma center for treatment. And he had life-threatening injuries. He succumbed to those injuries and died about 9.45 p.m. Saturday and was pronounced dead at the hospital. His cause of death was listed as traumatic brain injury. (sighs) Yes, indeed. Police said they are treating the incident as a homicide. It is a homicide. And have asked anyone with information to contact them. Uh, The police said anyone who assisted or abetted or was an accomplice of the main suspect or the primary suspect will be culpable. Just looking at the damage, that wasn't punching that did that. Not just punching, Tracy said. Like, there's no way that punching did that. The damage was done before the ambulance ever took him away. He had a seizure. It was done, she added. There was nothing the hospital could do. Yeah. Well, so I, this guy's de- de- basically doesn't want his kid to fight anymore. The, the where he screwed up was he said, you know, y'all right. fight me, not him. Yeah. yeah. Well, shut you know the door, what? man. Go the, inside and watch Family Feud. Don't is, worry about this it. This is a um, exactly why I own firearms. Because mm-hmm. I'm not fighting five people or however many people. If you're going to show up at my house and try to get my kids shit, you're going to spring a leak. Yeah. Well, let me tell you. Uh, there's a there's another podcast with a Navy SEAL that I watch, and his best advice for any fight, if it's one on one, whatever is run. Exactly, it's old, run. oldest Just, defense, oldest. And defense. he's a Navy SEAL. He oldest probably kill half of a man. Them. Or put the fucking gloves on, at, and don't write me on this, but. <laughs> Fight club at school yeah. again. Put the gloves on. <laughs> hey. Go to your separate corners. Fight it out. Best person win, and that's it. And it's over. I, Nothing I, where anybody I, can yeah. get fucking. Killed. When I was a kid, not worth the, it. Um, I mean, like a kid, probably 
11, 10, 9 years old, whatever, if I got into this fight, and even if I got my ass whooped, it was okay as long as I didn't back out of the fight. Right? Mm-hmm. My dad beat my ass if I came. Yeah, out. but back then they didn't shoot right, you. Right, 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 right. As now, quick now as they catch you. The whole fucking family's coming after this dude, this 14-year-old. Yeah. And crazy. The 14 year old probably crazy. got the best of them in a straight up fight. And now they're like, oh, shit, we're going to go in there. Yeah. Man, yeah, whatever. Uh, well, and what did the, the school do about any of this? Uh, well, well it, all of this, this aspect of it happened after the fight. You know, this was at the guy's house. So, but he's uh, saying, right, but 14 year old got in a fight. But if this happened yeah. in school, then you, you de escalate by calling in the parents mm-hmm. and having a discussion with everyone there about what happened. And, then you put the gloves on them, put them in a a, a ring, and let them yeah. have at it and declare somebody the winner. I don't know. Don't get it, but hey. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts to spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered... A super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut soy vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdown scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. And calming like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV, and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. And many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S., They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday hosts and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids, to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limit time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Hey, y'all, let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble meal kits are pre-prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. Their meal kits include everything you need so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in and I had three different meals. I had a Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boon jignon. However you say it, but let me tell you about the classic beef boon jignon. Look, it came with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi glaze, cremini mushrooms, ciapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something. And all the dishes were fire. But this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real we've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box right to my door so see what a difference gobble will make for your household right now they're all for my listeners a fantastic limited time deal you get a hundred and twenty dollars off across four boxes plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin-baked, and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. That's G-O-B-B-L-E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. This offer is not available on the home site, so don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth like you never had. 
talking and bring y'all an update on the story we brought y'all first last week. Uh, this is a crazy one, y'all. I was listening to it again this weekend. It's just absolutely crazy. New, New Mexico police released a photo of the note found on the body of an 18-year-old Bo Wilson, who authorities say shot and killed three elderly women. The grandmas, yeah, right, the 97. Edwin, uh, at random before deliberately taking off his bulletproof vest and ultimately getting killed by the responding officer. Um, Farmington Police Department also revealed that Wilson had amassed a cache of weapons and ammunition at the home he shared with his father. Law enforcement found approximately 1,400 rounds of ammo stored, as well as 10 other firearms of varying caliber scattered throughout the home. These weapons, accessible to Wilson, did not belong to him. Police also revealed that although Wilson had been wearing a bulletproof vest when he first opened fire from his home, he deliberately removed the vest prior to his encounter with, with the police and as he was walking down the street towards the church. At the press conference, the police chief said that Wilson had been wearing what appeared to be a modified vest with steel plates that had a note uh, found in the pocket. Do y'all know about the steel plates in the vest? That's for high ballistic rounds, for like rifle rounds. Mm. The re- you know, you have a regular bulletproof vest, which can stand sustain up to a, a pistol round. But, this, but the, I know that from the SWAT, you have put those plates are like 20 fucking pounds each. So I don't know where he got that. Uh, that from anyway but um so he'd been wearing the modified vest and he had a note found in the pocket handwritten in green lettering the message said if you're reading this i'm the end of the chapter Uh oh lay eyes or dear put a finger on my little sister i promise there will be regrets the note added at the onset of the rampage, police say Wilson fired at least 176 rounds from an AR uh, rifle just outside his home from the front porch area, but quickly dropped that weapon into some bushes, even though it still held more live ammunition. 176 rounds, 40-round magazine. Three, four, five so clips. Right? That's that's So he's firing Dropping them and reloading. Yeah. So that's that's a long time. And hit a bunch of houses. Right. Uh, the, uh, yeah, and then he continued firing two pistols, discarding a twenty two caliber gun, and then depleting rounds from a nine millimeter handgun, which is probably about 16, 15 in the mag and one in the chamber. Then a final shootout with police during which he left at least eighteen rounds. Uh, authorities said it appears that he shot indiscriminately at vehicles and bullets. Struck 11 of them along with seven homes um, slain by the shooter were longtime Farmington resident, residents Gwendolyn Schofield and 97, her 73-year-old daughter Melody um, Ivy and 79-year-old Shirley Bo- um, Boita. Police are probing Wilson's access to weapons, concerns about his prior mental health, and efforts are underway to subpoena medical and school records that might shed light on the issues. Truly crazy story. I mean, most people don't live to get to be that old. What, what did the uh, What did the second part of his note say about said, his sister? Uh, um, lay eyes or deer put a or it must be dare. Dare, yeah. Maybe he probably misspelled it. Put a finger on my little sister, and I promise, because he's misspelled promise to him, there will be regrets. And they said, so maybe somebody so touched his sister. So this some kind of retaliation yeah, for probably something somebody, that happened to his sister. Probably somebody kissed his sister. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, all the crazy people. As your international correspondent, it's time Don't to it. leave the shores of the United States. Just get row. This time we're going down under. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm down with my people down under. Good day, Mike. We're going real life, real crime. I think that's our second or third leading country. Second? Uh, third. Is it third? third? Canada's, Canada's, Canada's yeah, second. Yeah, and then, and then and the Aussie UK. And UK. Yeah. So, you know, Australia was, was a penal colony. That's yeah. how I got founded. Did you know that? A penal? Mm-hmm. Penal colony. It's where they put all the prisoners. The England, England shipped all their indentured service and prisoners to Australia. And it was basically a big fucking prison. That's a long way to send uh, hey, them. Well, you got to get rid of your people. Fidel Castro shipped them all to the United States. <laughs> and, uh, but it was a penal colony. But I mean, that's so. That's why I believe Tony Montana. we have so many fans down under because it's in their roots, right? Crime. 
Ah, uh, okay. It's in their roots, and fighting crime is in their roots, right? Uh, that's, Aussie police. I mean, fighting crimes in their yeah. in their. Who would you, you know say they don't, they don't have allow firearms? Though. You have to get like a really special web a register. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about Aussie weapons that uh-huh. the police use. But uh, who's the toughest cop you ever knew in in the U.S.? If I say, is there one name that pops up as the toughest guy ever? Kearney Foster. Okay. Really? That dude was just no kidding. Yeah. Okay. He was, he I'm going to talk. He was my bishop. You know what a bishop is? Shout out uh, Kearney. Um, or a rabbi. He's, the, he's the, passed now. Yeah, he passed. Yeah. He died during COVID. The, um, I know what polishing the bishop. Yeah, it, it's I, know, I know what burping the worm burping is. Burping the worm is. So a bishop or a rabbi is someone who takes you under their wing, takes a, a rookie under their wing and, and brings them up. So a mentor. Yeah, basically, yeah. Okay, so as tough a guy as he was, yeah. we're going down under, and so everything is inverted. I have found an officer who's the biggest pussy on the planet. <laughs> And you're no, that was a guy that hit at the school shooting. Mm-hmm. The school resource officer. Uh, mm-hmm. It's close. Yeah, right. it's close. I'm, so I'm let's down. Let's, I'm let's go down under and let's find out about a 95 year old Aussie woman who was tasered. 95 Five years, years old. old. Her name Claire Noland. Police responded to reports that she was wandering around the home with. A steak knife, a steak right. knife, at about 4 p.m. on Wednesday. Miss Nolan lived in a care home in the town of Kuma, which is about 70 miles from Canberra, which is uh, Australia's capital city. Oh, it's inland, though. Police said Nolan was armed with that steak knife, and on Friday they confirmed that she required a walker to move. Oh, my God. So we have a 95-year-old woman with a steak knife on a walker, but the officer discharged his taser after she began approaching him, quote, at a slow pace. Uh. New South Wales police said she died surrounded by family and loved ones. The officer who tasered Miss Noland has been charged with assault. The 33-year-old senior constable who fired the taser, who is a distant cousin of Prince Harry. Uh, Well, no, he's not a distant uh, cousin of Prince Harry, but he will face face court in early July on charges of recklessly causing grievous bodily harm, assault, occasioning actual bodily harm, and common assault. He remains suspended from duty uh, with pay while investigations continue. With pay. Miss uh, Nolan. That's uh, officially a vacation. There's, there's a picture of Mrs. Nolan. <laughs> lovely sad. Mrs. Nolan. That's sad. Okay. I who, can't believe that. Who suffered oh. a fractured skull and serious uh, brain bleed after falling and hitting her head after she was tasered. It has prompted calls for state parliamentary <sighs> inquiry and the release of police body cam vision of the confrontation. Can't wait to see that body cam video oh, on God, that is this nasty. one. So, as you should, lots of tough two, Aussies out there. This cop was two, not one. Two kinds of cops: the ones that need the badge, feel like the man, a man, and the ones who do it because they love it. I've seen cops. This guy evidently is a little bitch. Uh, um, although you have a twenty-one foot rule. And with knives, if someone gets within 21 feet of you, you can't use deadly force. I'm sure this guy was thinking he wasn't using deadly force. Steak Could, knife. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, and, and she's on a walker. It's not like she's going to bum rush him, right? But, I mean, he did what he did because he's a little bitch. Yeah. and Big bitch. Yeah, that's just stupid. And on another note, Billy is going to be offended that you didn't say he was the toughest cop you ever knew. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I, 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 I was the toughest cop I ever knew. If you want to go off go. those characteristics, I'm trying to think of people that are older and tougher that I had mad fucking respect That's for. That's pretty awesome. You know, yeah. Billy is a pretty badass cop. Though. Yeah. All right. You know, Woody Everton, you, every now and then, y'all, Woody has some genius ideas. Oh, he had, he had a genius idea that I have to give him mad props for, and that was his mile high crimes. That's because every, every week we're. Covering some crazy ass shit on a plane or yeah. an airport, right? 
So we're going to get a sound for this. Maybe it'll be like, you know, uh, you may now move about the cabin. Yeah, or something what's funny the one before. If, the, if the mask drop, then don't put it, your own shit on before you put it on your kid or whatever. That's pretty much yeah. what I'm yeah. <laughs> So if you have, a, if you have a good idea for that, send it to us. Email that. it to us. Uh, so we're going to get into to today's Mile High Crime segment. Mile High. A Boston man has been arrested and charged for allegedly attempting to open an emergency exit door. Oh, that's a no-no. That's a no-no. This was on United Airlines, but it gets worse than that, y'all. He then attempted to stab a flight attendant in the neck. Uh, And this was a flight from Los Angeles to Boston. Yeah. Uh, I'm waiting for Mike to say, hey, surprise me, we're going to Boston. Uh, Friends, yeah, I bet it's, it's Philly. It's Philly. Yeah. <laughs> it's Philly. Boston, Boston's okay. okay. Boston, I'm All right. Like Boston, yeah. Francisco Torres, 33, was charged with a count of interference and attempted interference with a flight crew and using a dangerous weapon. He was arrested yesterday at Boston Logan International Airport. Yeah. Uh, Torres was a passenger on that United Airlines flight, and approximately 45 minutes prior to landing, the flight crew received an alarm in the cockpit that a starboard side door located between the first class and coach sections was disarmed. Is, is this oh, in God, mid-air? he went that far, huh? Okay. This is in midair? This yeah. is in midair. Oh, 45 minutes before they landed. On the plane. So the flight attendant, she goes to inspect that, right? Uh, and they, she finds that the door's locking handle had been moved out of the fully locked position uh-huh. towards the unlocked position and that the emergency slide arming lever had been moved to the disarmed position. Uh-huh. She reported this to the captain and the flight crew secured the door. A fellow flight attendant reported that he had observed Torres near the door and believe that he was affecting it. Right. So they're standing there and they're trying to figure out who did this. That dumbass does uh, that. Yeah, exactly. So he uh he approaches and asks Torres, Hey man, did you did you mess with this door? The flight attendant then notified the captain that they believe Torres posed a threat to the aircraft because he's right. well fuck he's, a, he's basically looking he at him did. like, Yeah, I did. Uh, and she told the captain he needed to land as soon as possible. Shortly thereafter, Torres gets out of his seat, approaches the side door where the two flight attendants were standing. One of the flight attendants sees him mouthing off something that she couldn't hear, right. but she could see from his facial expression it wasn't a nice comment, right? right. Then Torres thrusts towards one of the flight attendants in a stabbing motion with a broken metal spoon. I was going to ask you what it was. He hits the flight attendant in the neck area three times. What? Oh yeah, God. this is going on during the flight, y'all. Passengers then I was tackle say, Torres. I would beat that ass. Oh yeah, yeah. look. Since nine yeah. eleven, yeah. yeah. anybody I jumps out of a seat, I'm swinging. Right. So uh, the passengers they tackle Torres. He gets restrained with the assistance of the flight crew, and he is immediately, obviously, taken into custody upon the upon the flight's arrival to Boston. That's crazy. Yeah. The uh, so, what so, freaking was he trying to take the whole maybe plane so. down? Could have been a terrorist attack. Yeah, uh, he uh, was. If he if he was planning on opening that emergency door, exit he, door, he, he was wanting to kill everybody. Yeah. yeah, that plane was going depressurized. Down. Whatever happened to the? Um, and I used to want to be one. The um, the air marshals. Yeah, uh, they, they still exist. Around? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I try to figure out who they are when yeah. I fly. Yeah, I'm like, you're a freaking air marshal. You got the look. <laughs> you got the look. <laughs> uh, the- yeah, there's. I've been reading some stuff where maybe they've been diverted and they're not exactly. This those marshals aren't exactly. They were, yeah. The government's using them a little differently these days. Uh, there's this guy, y'all. He went on Family Feud and he joked that he regretted marrying his wife, but now he's on trial for murder. Mm. The estranged wife of former Family Feud contestant suspected of her murder, told her sister she feared for her life prior to her death. Timothy W. Balafnik is accused of killing Rebecca Balafnik in her Quincy, Illinois home earlier this year. The pair were going through a divorce at the time of the slaying. Blafnik, 39, is charged with two counts of first-degree murder and one count of home invasion in connection with Rebecca's death. He has pled not guilty. On well, Tuesday, witnesses for the prosecution took the stand, including one of Rebecca's sisters, Sarah Riley. Riley testified Rebecca, 41, had previously made it known she was concerned her strange husband might end up physically hurting her. Riley said Rebecca texted her in September of 2021 
If something ever happens to me, make sure the number one person of interest is Tim. I'm putting this in writing that I'm fearful he will somehow harm me. Prosecution also accused Lefnick of conducting a number of disturbing Internet searches. Here we go, y'all. Clear your search history. Around the time of Rebecca's alleged murder, including instructions on how to use a crowbar to open a window. I mean, how, how the fuck have you got to research that? I mean, I'm not mechanical, but I, I can <laughs> figure out how you get a crowbar to open a window. But in how to make a homemade silencer and local res- police response times. Rebecca's God, people father, get busted right, every time with the re- crowbar searches. On a window. Rebecca's <laughs> father, William Possel. How to screw in a light bulb. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Found her dead on her bathroom floor after she failed to pick up her three kids from school February 23rd. Two and a half weeks later, Blyfnick was charged with her murder. Prosecutors alleged she used a crowbar to break into Rebecca's second story. Imagine that. Now, I'm surprised he didn't look out, uh, research how to use a ladder to get to the second story. <laughs> and when he proceeded to shoot her 14 times. Ouch. Wow, nothing exceeds like excess. Blyfnick and some of his family members were previously contestants on the game show Family Feud in an episode aired in 2020. When asked by host C. Harvey, what's your biggest mistake you made at your wedding? Blyfin replied, when I said I did. Damn. Not I, bet ma- that, I bet they got silent after <laughs> that. Did they ma- win? But then it can continue on. Not my mistake, not my mistake. I love my wife. Uh, I'm going to get in trouble for that, aren't I? <laughs> uh, most definitely. <laughs> that, that you screwed, dude. Yeah, anyway, the trial is continuing. And another dumbass. I'm sorry about the lady getting killed. Why, why do they say he's charged with two counts? They said it's, um, it's two counts of first degree murder. One count, maybe he killed somebody else too. And maybe he murdered that window with the crowbar. Yeah, yeah. right. Jeez, you're going to see this idiot getting a ladder to get to the second story window. I need some Crazy. banjos. Uh oh, play it. Dumb criminal. God, I wish that was longer. Love it. <laughs> Dumb criminals for Friday. We're in Michigan where a 20-year-old Michigan man has been charged after allegedly threatening to shoot up Woodhaven High School mm. during a live video on social media. Oh, that's smart. There yes. According to police, Kenny Raymond Larkins made the threat on May 9th while on Instagram Live. Police say Larkins could be seen with and without a hood and a mask on. (laughs) Okay, that's really good. (laughs) And appeared to be acting erratically, stating, quote, I can feel it. I am shooting up Woodhaven High School. Jeez. A shelter in place order was put in place throughout the Woodhaven Brownstone School District while authorities investigated. Police were able to quickly identify Larkins in the video, and he was arrested by Van Buren Township Police shortly thereafter. Larkins was arraigned Friday on one count of false report or threat of terrorism, a 20-year felony. He was also indicted on one count of being a complete and total effing idiot. (laughs) He was issued a $500,000 cash bond and ordered to wear a tether should he be released. Why would you let that guy be released even after you got $500,000? I mean, come on. Um, Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, in this day and thank, age, thank God gonna, there's a, yeah. a school shooter that dumb. Right. Um, yeah. In this so, day and age, you're going to go on social media and live and say, I'm about to go shoot up a school. Yeah. Yeah. I, if I was a parent, I'd be waiting there to blow your brains out or Idiot. beat your ass. Right? Definitely a dumb criminal. Definitely. Deserves some banjos. banjos for real. All right. Was that a do si do you just did? That was Jim? a do si do. Throwing it down. All right, so we've talked a lot lately about, especially the Tigerland area, Baton Rouge, right. and, mm-hmm. and, and all there. the trouble yeah. that that has been taking place there. For those of you that aren't from Louisiana, that's that's LSU uh, area, just, and it just is outside the gates down yeah. Nicholson. It's a large um, uh, apartment 
community, and I had the first one behind the college tiger, apartment, and then, Joe. The, and they have the triangle of bars that are there in the front. Yeah, yeah that's apartments. where the whole yeah. Matty Brooks right business exactly. started. Very popular amongst the students at LSU. So popular when I was there. They've had another problem there since the Matty Brooks stuff went down, and a, a man has been arrested for an alleged rape that happened after a night of drinking in Tigerland. Uh, this was yeah. back in April. This incident occurred. Uh, according to Baton Rouge Police, the victim said she met Andrew Andy Lee at Fred's in Tigerland right. on clock. April 1st. Yeah, everybody around here knows about Fred's. The pair consumed multiple alcoholic beverages and talked throughout the night before leaving at 2 a.m. when the bar closed. The victim told police the next memory she had was waking up in Lee's bed naked, and he was attempting to have sex with her. The brew feed. The victim said when she woke up, she had no memory of going to Lee's home, and her vagina felt sore. Oh, Lord. According to arrest records, the victim confronted Lee about trying to have sex with her, and Lee told her she was acting crazy, and he had no idea what she was talking oh, about. No. Well, he was arrested on Monday for third degree rape, and what do you, what, let's talk about third degree rape. What is that? That's when a person, basically like uh, Madison Brooks was, because of the the your condition, you can't, right? You can't refuse it, right? Yeah. Uh, so obviously, she was. Too drunk and, and probably too roofied yeah, to I mean, submit, I mean, it sounds like, in this that. case. It, it, you know, a lot of these cases, the girl could wake up, and they had a boyfriend, and they're like, holy shit. And then and I've, I've worked a case like this where, where it's a false complaint, but when she asks this dude, uh, what are you doing? And he's like, or, you know, why is my vagina sore or whatever? And, and he's like, mm, I don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. But she's naked in your bed. So, yeah, he, yeah. he probably did that. Right. So, whatever. Um, so, hopefully, Tigerland can get their shit together. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's been going on there forever, but it is what it is. Hey, ladies. Are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's sending your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes. Your body goes through it. Premenopause, menopause. And while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is you don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have hormone harmony, a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says it makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H-A-P-P-Y-M-A-M-M-O-T-H dot com and use code R-L-R-C. So, all right. I told y'all earlier about when we were talking about the Hot Pockets episode and I had the guy who murdered his brother for a mayo sandwich. Well, this one is titled, Too Much Mayo Can Kill You. Just ask this subway worker. Y'all like subway? I do. I don't go there a whole lot. But when, I, when I was living in the Tigerland, they used to have a card. I was telling my son about this uh, uh, this weekend. They had the card. Every one you bought, they punched mm -hmm. out your thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got 10 of them. You got a free 16 sub when you're a starving college student. That was, that was like, you know, the feast. Of what was your favorite when, when I first, sub? I don't even remember. Just any, like the meatball. I don't even I don't think they had meatballs meatball. back then. It was like 35 years ago. I think I like the, I like the Italian. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mike's Number sure. eight or something. Um, when I first saw that, I thought they meant Marta because the way that the the, yeah. the the first line of that uh, of that story goes. But um, there's a bunch of other you know Jersey Mikes and these other uh, chains out there, but they're all more. They've gotten to where they're like 
14, 15 bucks for well, a sandwich. That's stupid. Is crazy. My, uh, back to our kids thing and why they should go to Hello Fresh and that bloody Angola 16. Um, I, I get the credit cards in. It's $29 at Subway. I'm like, how the fuck can you spend twenty nine dollars at Subway? Do you get a Hummer after no, that? Well, he's, I'm sure he's feeding all his fraternity brothers or his girlfriend. <laughs> but anyway, so an Atlanta Subway. Uh, at an Atlanta Subway, a worker was shot dead after a customer opened fire following an argument over the amount of mayonnaise on his sandwich. Good lord! On Sunday Jesus. night at around six thirty, a customer ordering a sandwich at Subway connected to a gas station, which is prominent now, that located in the city's downtown area, erupted into a dispute with one of the employees and opened fire. One employee was fatally wounded, and another was sent to the nearby hospital. The owner of the subway said that the disgruntled customer decided to shoot his two employees after they became angry about the amount of mayonnaise on their fast food meal. Believe it or not, it was about... Too much mayonnaise on the sandwich, the owner said. The stories, the store's on-duty manager reportedly returned fire at the suspect, but missed. So the manager's packing. Everybody wants to carry a gun. Everybody wants to scare somebody with a gun. It's scary out here, Mr. Glenn said. Police are still investigating the shooting, reviewing surveillance video, and interviewing witnesses while they actively search for the suspect. The second victim was hospitalized but has been released. Wow. Too much mayo. Too much mayo. I mean, there's got to be more to it than that, right? Or this guy's just that much of an idiot. They'd be like, hmm. Yeah, because you could, from what I hadn't been in years, but you'd say, I want this, this, and this. And everybody said, what's mayo? Or sure. And maybe they put it on there and he was like, that's too much. And they might have been like, fuck you. I'll put some more in there. And then, but that's still not a reason to get shot. No, murder. you go back he and ask him somebody. to remake the sandwich. Yeah, I mean, and and hey, the manager wouldn't have any of it either. He's, he's blasting too. Crazy. Okay. They're going to need metal detectors at all of these places before, uh, yeah. you know, that people are going to have to Ridiculous. walk through before they can they can go in. This is a story uh, about a man named some Brady. boys in New York, and uh, I'm going to give a, a little... Uh, New York feel and New York experience where uh, I I suspect some wrongdoing here where uh, it doesn't seem like the authorities believe there was. But a uh, the body of an 11 year old New York boy who went missing a week ago was found on Saturday morning in the Hudson River. This is two days after the body of his friend was found by police in the Harlem River. Alpha Barry was 11 and Garrett Warren was 13. They were last seen together on surveillance camera after school in Harlem on May the 12th, according to the NYPD. Warren's body was found on Thursday morning in the Harlem River near the Madison Avenue Bridge, which is uh, like close to Yankee Stadium there. Yeah. Um, so you're at the, the, the northern tip of uh, uh, of Manhattan and uh the Harlem River there is just, you know, it's, you can hit a sand wedge over. It's like 80 yards, 100 yards. Um, here's what here's what I don't get. Is I lived there for 40 years. Nobody goes swimming in the Harlem River. Nobody goes swimming in the East River. Nobody goes swimming in New York Harbor. Not after you do. Nobody goes swimming in the Hudson River unless you're, unless you're way, way, way river away from uh, the city. The currents are, I mean, serious stuff in all of those rivers. And e- even the the best swimmers are, are, are challenged and kids don't swim in there. I thought you were going to say it's because of pollution because after your dirty ass got in the water. Oh, that was Cleveland off. when the Cuyahoga River was set uh, on fire. Yeah. Um, so they're treating this somehow as Accident, like they think these kids uh, drown, that they just went for a swim and drown. And I just can't believe, you know, police are saying foul play wasn't suspected um, and a final cause of death hasn't been declared. Look, there are all of these crazy people running around New York City. We saw a woman thrown into uh, a subway yeah. two days ago who uh, yeah. ended up being crippled. As a result, we 
obviously everyone knows the story of uh, the guy who'd been arrested 44 times who uh, unfortunately died as uh, somebody was trying to be a good Samaritan in the subway a week before. There are uh, homeless, there are uh, people who are uh, drug addicts, and they've also got all of these uh, uh, illegals who have been brought to New York City um, – 30,000 or uh, or so who are spread through hotels around the city. Something happened to these boys. Boys don't just go diving in these uh, uh, in the rivers to swim. And, and where they're talking about, uh, they must have been together and it happened together because where the bodies are found is not that far, that far apart. And I'm, I'm telling you, I just, I just don't believe they went for a swim. Yeah. It's maybe, it's, I mean, it certainly it's going to be investigated, but if they have, I, uh, if somebody not, just threw them in the water, if somebody you, just tossed them in the water, yeah. they're not going to know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It, 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 maybe they couldn't even swim. The, uh, but I mean, it'd be really hard to hold two kids underwater one time and, and drown them unless it was multiple people. Oh no, you wouldn't have to hold them up. All you'd have to do you say in the water is that bad is throw them, like, is throw them in. in front of and Francis to your, Atlanta, to right? your point, a lot of city kids, don't know how to swim. There's there's not a whole lot of public pools, uh, and yeah. you know some families don't you know have the wherewithal to go to the beach. They they may not have been able to swim at all. Don't know, but um, I, I just smell a big rat with that story. Horrible it doesn't, for those families. I can't imagine. It. Well, you know, and and one thing we haven't heard today is. Oh, just when I was thinking about the kinkiest of kinky. And it got kinky crime. Kinky crimes for Friday. Hit me with it, Woody. I'm ready to get kinky. All right, so. You guys want me to leave? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can go, no, I mean, I can go out got, for a couple of minutes. You film it. <laughs> I, don't want that, I don't want that anaconda on film. So look, in Oklahoma, authorities arrested a guy for... Digital indecent exposure hmm. after he sent naked photos of himself to strangers. Hey. All right. I don't really know how that's a crime. Well, but let's, get into let's figure it. it out. The Tulsa Police Department said officers responded to a call from an apartment complex for a report of indecent exposure. Uh oh. The employees of the apartment complex said the suspect, identified as Stacy Jack Helm, arrived on at the complex to apply for an apartment. Mm. So the appointment, let me read this to you again. The employees of the apartment of the complex said the suspect had arrived at the complex to apply for an apartment. Okay, now I get it. While Helm was sitting at the computer filling out the application, employees told officers they received two airdrop notifications, airdrop notifications where another iPhone was attempting to send photos. Uh-oh. Employees said they were curious about the contents and accepted the airdrop request. I bet they were. They told police the airdrop photos they received were of Helm, the guy that's applying for the apartment, naked in front of a mirror, as well as photos of his genitalia. <laughs> I mean, unless he's holding his hairy bubble gum, I don't know how it was his. They knew it was his. But Helm was then arrested for indecent exposure. And police recommend that you set your airdropping, airdroppings, airdrops to where you can only receive from contacts only. Now, let's think about that. Maybe he, I mean, he had an in his airdrop thing and butt dialed it. it you know, it, a good lawyer could probably get him out yeah, of this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it was, lawyer, it yeah. might have been a total accident. Right, right, this dude right, might have right. been in, as embarrassed they, as they were, but, but they might have been smoke shows. But they still have to, to accept it, though. They still yeah. have to accept it, which they did. And look, y'all. Oh. oh, well, there you have proof. So I am going Michael, Michael to Lookism. definitely <laughs> upload this dude's mugshot yeah. on the Facebook page. Yeah. You have to see yeah. this guy. I, I'm thinking if I saw seeing anything from him, I'd. Brad Pitt, he is shit. not. Yeah, oh, either. come on. Be fair to the guy. No, oh, no. I, Do you look as him for one? Is, <laughs> I think, is I come think out? This, this very good chance that. that <laughs> uh, that they thought it was this guy. We're hoping it was this guy, and that's why they opened but the they air. They said it was box. him in I mean, front of a mirror, and, and then they said it's all his junk. So, yeah, know, and uh, you know, sometimes so that might be sometimes the little head's a lot more attractive than the big head. I get you that, never, right? But hey, it might be a new pickup tactic. Think about it. You know, it's like the guys will walk. Yeah. The guy walked up to people with the shoes. 
99 times out of 100, it's not going to work. That, that one time. That's it. So, ladies, <laughs> be careful about the airdrops you yeah, accept. Yeah, your shit off if you want to see Mike's junk. Yeah. Jack and the Beanstalk <laughs> is always safer. Burping the worm. That was a good one. Good one. Thank you. Yeah, we can yeah. upload that picture, y'all, to Facebook for sure. Yes. I have another kinky cry. I want you to know I, I have so not funny. signed any kind of a release on this next segment. I've not oh, given permission right. to yeah. be treated this way. I don't know what this yes. is. Y'all? Yes. Payback's a motherfucker. Isn't oh, first, it's your hand, it's handwritten, so I'm going to have to read. Let me tell y'all. Jim's let writing. me tell y'all what's going hey, on man. here. So we've hey, got a game. We've got a game for Mike. Now, what y'all don't ever see is our kind of pre-planning for these episodes. Yeah. So, as most of you have probably figured out by now, Mike tries to be a little slick about yeah. sneaking stories in there. Right. I mean, everything <laughs> from <laughs> Earth, never Earth Day and to the rolls. That's right. Not that's factual. right. But we're democratic around here, and hey, you know, we, the good thing is we got an odd number of people, so we have right. a quorum, right. and uh, so it's a, a yay or nay oh, so on you're whether there's stories on this. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> well, I just you, wanted to make sure. I was, you, would you might agree with you uh, and not agree, me I, on something? I agree. Uh, to be co conspirators because <laughs> payback's a bitch. Okay, so you have you, you, have you just stick shit in together. there that we don't even well, know about. Yeah. Okay. Mike put in a story the other day on golf and he put saw, steals the that. show I and it becomes it. a crime. I heard, I heard <laughs> that. Stole the PGA? Oh, should, did you see the response <laughs> on Facebook about that? Uh, uh, you know, uh, you guys uh, you guys see certain things that you want to see and then yeah yeah and then of course, yeah, of course. I have so, the real it pulse my story. Of the pulse of the people yeah and the, the pulse of not uh, so yeah. the pulse of everybody but real life real crime lessons <laughs> <laughs> So what we've decided to do, y'all, is I, if we we've come up with a game for Mike, and um, this, be it, this is kind of in honor of our new sponsor, which is Rosetta Stone. Rosetta Stone, Stone. and uh, really cool. They pledged to teach Woody English. That's <laughs> yes, yeah. That's right. Teaching me King's English. So we're gonna call this Cajun Connection, and what we're gonna do is I'm going to I have on flashcards here. I know y'all can't see. But I have a last name in Cajun that all Mike has to do is pronounce this last name. I have 10 of them. Right. If Mike gets eight right, eight out of 10, and these are common. Okay, these wait, wait. Are, in what game we've played, have either you or Woody ever gotten eight out of 10 right? I, no, a couple. 80% of them. is a C. Yeah. So we, we're only is asking, actually a B minus, but uh, <laughs> well, but, but <laughs> when I was in school, it was a C. They done they, they've dumbed yeah, it down yeah, now. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is eighty percent, eight out eight out of ten. But if you get eight out of ten, you get what we're gonna call the veto power. So, because Woody and I might veto some of your stories sometimes, you get the power to veto or veto and do any story you want. Oh, my If God. you get 80%. Jim Chapman must be really be sure about these. <laughs> Woody's open. <laughs> now, I haven't figured out, because me and Woody have not conferred yet, on what we get if you don't get 80%. Yeah. We get to... Uh, but I, what I will tell you is it's not a trap, and every single one of these names is very common here in Louisiana. Right. So um, I'm going to spell it out. You cannot use your AI bullshit to try to uh, do my, Cajun, Do I have any technology in my hand? You don't need anything? No technology we, in I my hand. I will be fair, and, and Jim will be fair, on because I can promise you I know how to say Yeah, I'm always. going to participate in this. I haven't even looked at them, but I can promise you I know how to say I'm going to refer you to the actual contract and that none of this shit matters, but let's listen to <laughs> This and, bullshit. And so and so I'm gonna spell out the word so y'all can follow along. If you're if you're somewhere you can write, you can write it down. So you're showing you're showing I'm me gonna a name. show you the word and I'm gonna spell it for the listeners. The first one I'm showing him, y'all, He's is G A U T H I E R. One of my first girlfriends. Gautier. No. Say it again. Gautier. Ah. Gauche. Gauche. Well, that's one. <laughs> there's there's, a, rather famous, sure there's the a rather He's famous. There's a rather famous. It's a rather famous designer. Yeah, with hey, that hey, exact hey, don't make a shit. We're, we're talking about said Louisiana. It differently. Yeah. All right, hey, okay. don't feel bad because you're incompetent. Here's your, <laughs> here's your next one. Go shit. I'm showing him. Go f yourself. I'm showing him T R A H A N. Had a roommate at USL. Scott was his first name and a fraternity brother. I know what you're gonna say, but it's not gonna be right. I know, which is why I'm not saying. <laughs> Train. 
It's Traha. 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 Or you could say it the way Woody just said it. Traha. Even it ends in an N. All right, we're gonna we're gonna knock it down to you only have to get seventy (laughs) percent. Yeah, he's already there. I'm gonna (laughs) gonna try to find more. And these are like the easiest. No, what all this is doing is proving that that this is a language of illiteracy. I I had a D O U roommate. Pratt, C-E-T. who runs a casino in, in, in uh, the other side of Louisiana now. That Pratt. should be Doucette. But. Yep. That's, we'll give him that. Actually, you give him that? Yeah, it's Because it can be, say, it can, it can be Doucette, and, but Doucet is, Doucet is, correct, is but, even but more Cajun. Too. But we'll, we'll, give, we'll, you we'll give you that one. one. I got one. This one you got to get. Yeah, really good. This one you got to get. All right, y'all. I'm showing him L-E-B-L-A-N-C. Come on, bro. LeBlanc. Nope. Nope. <laughs> The Le C is silent. LeBlanc. 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 The C is silent. LeBlanc. <laughs> I, I bought my house so you can't from miss anymore. the LeBlancs. Sorry. So you can't Sorry. miss anymore okay. from here on out. All right. <laughs> this is such idiotic. C-O-R-M-I-E. Cormier. Fratern- yeah, very good. Oh, you, yeah, you yeah, got yeah, it. You got Cormier. That That's MMA right. Fighter, but I had another fraternity brother with that the last night. All right. Cormier. Keith Cormier. D-E-L-A-U-N-E. <laughs> I'm giving it high fives to Jim on this one. You mean, hey, Delaney, <laughs> Delon, Delon. It's all in the pronunciation. So you, <laughs> okay, that one wasn't that far. Okay, so it doesn't matter. I'm, you got to get not, it correct. I'm not able to use any reasoning. You here are because there's pronunciation no police. This is our turn we'll, to get it back. On we'll here. go through. We'll go through the rest yeah, real okay, quick just to see. I know Karen Ortholon is dying. B-O-U-D-R-E-N. Boudreaux, he got that one. right. All right, this one is my wife's maiden name. All right. O-L-I-V-I-E-R. I I know this. Olivier. Very good. Very good. All right. You'll never get this one. G-R-A-N-I-E-R. Grenier. Yes, you got that one. Very good. What am I up to now? Well, you, oh, you you've already this missed too This is no longer. But, it, but it's fun. Yeah, right We're teaching you Cajun French. L A B E T. There's a reason Rosetta Stone doesn't offer this language because it's not a language. Uh, a language. L A. That's right. I'm impressed. Right? I didn't think you'd get that good. one. You still lost. All right. <laughs> I'm got to be close to seven now. No. F O R T I E R. Forte. Very close. Forte. But <laughs> I, I would give you that one. B A R R I L L E A U S. Easy peasy. Barolo. What say it again? Barolo. That's right. Uh, you That's said right. right the second time. You said Barolo the first yeah, time. Yeah, but he got. Yeah. All right, we'll give it. You time. didn't do bad. You got yeah. six out of six out of them. Yeah. Wait, you wait, let me six. see how many. Uh, I'll show supposed, you the ones you missed. You were supposed to get. You were supposed to get eight. Well, and well, well, that was your arbitrary scoring system. You missed that I was the one. You yeah. missed Cormier. No, I got Cormier. Oh, he missed Doucet. You missed LeBlanc. I got Doucet. Yeah. You I, got, missed, you I got LeBlanc because I you bought missed You missed Gauthier. Gauthier. That's four. That's 60%. Okay, sir. that is the name of a French designer. I got that right. Uh, <laughs> this is the name of an actor from Friends, <laughs> yeah, uh, Matt LeBlanc. Not in South Louisiana. So, well, so during the I tried to get during you the okay. intro, when it's friends okay. when friends would run on television mm-hmm. in Louisiana I used to watch every night and out. they would Great. say his name, they would they the they wouldn't say the C. Absolutely. It would yeah. just be Matt LeBlanc. Matt LeBlanc. That's, right. That's right. what they used to call him. And it's okay to LeBlanc. Mike, it's okay. It to, is LeBlanc. That's he, what I said. He is not Cajun though. Mike, it's okay to be a loser. <laughs> <laughs> he hates to lose. I just, I, but you I, learn I like, some Cajun. I like that. competing in games that are fair. Based thank you, Jim Chapman, for whipping that one up. And we got a prize uh, coming to us. I we am don't know what it is. Still a yeah, vice president. You know, of we games. get to veto one of his stories, right? That's the prize. Well, we veto it anyway. <laughs> No, I was giving no. him the power the to time time get the it with the ding 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 of breaking roll news or whatever. Yeah. We'll give you a we'll give you a, another we game broke next that week. That story and every <laughs> <Yes>. major <laughs> newspaper, cable cha- news channel, yeah. everyone else covered it after. That All was right. fun. That All was right. fun. That was great. And look, hey, we appreciate I y'all. I want to say we love and appreciate each and every one of y'all. Wait a minute, I have another story. Oh shit! Here it comes. No, I don't. 
Yeah, I do. I want to do a little story on Jeffrey Epstein. And oh, the, 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 we're vetoing you now. <laughs> veto. A veto. A veto. He's a veto. You don't, Sorry. Ain't so the Gates Thank Epstein y'all. story is unimportant. Thank y'all God, yes. so much for liking and listening and sharing. That's please, Woody has been to Epstein Island. Please, he and Bill Clinton yeah, went right. in like 2006. The, uh, anyway. The Lolita Express. The, where Woody had Thank y'all a. very much. For liking and sharing, please continue to do so. Yeah. Our numbers are great. We, Thank uh, you for interacting on Facebook, yes, too. Yes, yes, yes. We, lo- yeah. we, love, we love it when y'all ride Mike's oh, ass. Oh, shit, and, yeah. And so keep doing that. Mike have, I think, one fan of millions. One and a half. <laughs> She's pregnant. <laughs> and she has an Italian S name, right? <laughs> or a surname. But thank you so much. And yeah. I'm blessed to be here with these guys. Um I mean, we're blessed to get to do what we do. Amen. We couldn't do it without y'all. I love and appreciate each and every one of y'all. Go to uh, Cor- Corporal Sean Kelly's benefit on June yep. 3rd if you get a chance. And thank you so much. Yep. And until next time, I'm Jim Chapman. I'm Woody Everton. And I'm Mike Agavino. The You're lo- the loser. <laughs> Your host of Under Re- Protest. Real Life, Real Crime Daily. Peace. Peace. Show business. Show business.